Hey everybody, welcome to the Friday live stream. So glad you could join me today. We've got uh, quite a few news items to go over. Today is going to be a little bit more relaxed, of a, or not, I don't know, not relaxed, but a little less structured uh, than last week. I had some, you know, a fun quiz and everything. But today we've got a few news items to go over, and I wanted to make sure we got through all of that um, in the next 30 minutes or so. So uh, thank you everybody for joining me. Um, SpongeBob, hello, Jaden, Manmeet, uh, thank you so much for for coming here. Uh, it's nice to see you. Let's let's actually start while we're waiting for you know people to join in. Usually it takes you know five or ten minutes for people to get the notification, uh, come in. So we'll give them a few minutes. But while we're waiting, let's take a question here from Jaden. What streaming apps do you use for your personal use, and what streaming uh, streaming devices do you use for personal use, not related to work? Great question. Um, this is one. Uh, so I, I've I've talked a little bit about this in the in the past. Um, so let's see. Is it? Oh, did I leave my remote? I think I left my remote. Oh well, I've got all my other remotes, but not my main one. Um, so right up here above me is my Roku TV. So I've been using Roku since 2015, 2016, somewhere in there. Um, uh, so I've been like it's been a Roku house for a long time just because that's it's the easiest it's what I know it's what my wife knows my kids know how to use it um, and so typically like when you go to any given TV in the house I think we have two or three of them uh, then it's probably going to be a Roku TV uh, but for my personal use when um, when I'm out here in the studio I I'd say 60, 70% of the time, I just keep it on the Roku TV because, you know, it's simple. I don't have to use any other remotes, whatever, you know, et cetera. Uh, but the other, the other time that I, okay, so let's say it's 60% Roku. I probably do 30% on the, uh, the new Chromecast. I really like that one. Um, and then I use my Fire TV for, uh, or Fire Stick 4K. Uh, the other maybe 10% of the time. Kind of just depends on what I want to do. I use this one a lot when I'm watching Twitch. So I don't know if you guys, and this gets into what apps I use uh, for personal use. We haven't talked a lot about Twitch on the reviews channel just because it's so gamer niche um, that I, you know, I haven't been sure if it's, uh, uh, not not sure if it's, quite in our wheelhouse, but maybe I ought to do something on Twitch. I, I did something for the, uh, the anime crowd a couple of years ago that turned out to be really popular. So maybe we should do something for the gamers too. But anyway, when I hop on Twitch, it's through my Fire TV, uh, Fire Stick. Speaking of which, I cannot believe I'm, I, I'm streaming right now and I want you all to be very grateful because right now uh, the, big, um, the big dream hack StarCraft II tournament is going on and I'm missing it. So that's for you. I'm doing this for you. Uh, so yeah, th those are the devices I use. Um, as far as what apps I use on a regular basis, I, um, I find myself not often in Netflix anymore. Um, I will go in there every so often, but usually I go into Netflix because there's a title that I know um, that I know I want to go watch a title that I know I'm interested in. I don't do a lot of um, browsing or surfing on Netflix anymore. Most of the time, if I'm gonna be browsing or surfing, it's probably gonna be on HBO Max. Um, but most of the others, when we're talking, or H I should say HBO Max or Amazon Prime, um, I do some browsing on Prime Video as well. But anyway, most of the time, if I go to Netflix or Disney Plus or Apple TV Plus, um, then those, uh, like, I know what I'm going in there to watch. So, um, so yeah, um, those, where is my remote? You know what? This is kind of, this is kind of, it's messing with my head a little bit. Okay. It is all the way over there. I found it, but I can't go get it right now. Um, anyway, so hopefully that answers the question. If you have any more specific questions, let me know. Uh, but now that we do have a few people logged into the stream, thank you all for joining us on this lovely Friday. It's raining here in Utah. I, you know, hopefully it's uh, equally lovely weather where you're at. I, I love the rain. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to start. Last time I ended the stream by announcing the previous week's giveaway winner. Today I'm going to start by doing that. 
Uh, last week, we did a giveaway for an Amazon Smart Plug. Um, I've got like three or four of those around the house at this point, and I love them. They're absolutely fantastic. Um, and thank you to everybody who uh, logged in to our uh, giveaway page and entered the giveaway. But the winner this week is Amy Boyd. Amy Boyd, congratulations. You are the winner of the Amazon Smart Plug. If you haven't received an email yet, Amy, you will very soon. Um, but uh, yeah, and then we'll, you know, we'll verify your info and get that sent out to you. But for the rest of you, today I have something in the works. Um, it is, for, for today's giveaway, I want you to first of all, go down to the description. Um, if you're, I, it's below you on YouTube, it might be above you on Facebook. I can't remember, honestly. Uh, I don't use Facebook much anymore, so <laughs> I can't remember which side it's on. A anyway, point being, go to the, to the description. There's a link to our giveaways page. Uh, please head over there and check that out. Bookmark that page uh, because we update that nearly every week. Uh, the giveaway entries are open from Friday, usually right about now, until the end of the day. Thursday. So you can get the exact times there in the terms and conditions on that page. Uh, but anyway, this week we are giving away a, uh, uh, hang on, let me, let me actually pull it up here. It's the Roku Express 4K Plus. Good. I got the name right. The Roku Express 4K Plus. Uh, 4K Plus. Let's see if we can pull that up here. So, okay, here we go. This is what we're giving away this week. And I'll tell you why. Um, a couple of things led me to this. Uh, there we go. There's my, there's my page. Nope. There we go. All right, the Roku Express 4K Plus. Basically, if, you, if you're familiar with the Roku, Roku line, the Roku Express is the cheapest in the line, right? So it's typically retailed for like as little as 20 bucks, you know, maybe 25 or 30 if you're getting the Roku Express Plus, but now they've added 4K to it. Um, and with the Plus, so 4K Plus, the Plus usually means that you get a fully functional uh, voice command remote with it. Uh, so that's what we are giving away this week. This one, it, it's it's a great way to get into streaming or to get into Roku if you don't want to do it. You know, it's some giant investment of uh, you know 100 bucks for the Roku Ultra or what have you, uh, or buy a Roku TV. You can buy the Express, kind of check it out, see you know see if you like Roku, and then if you do, uh, you go for one of the more expensive devices. Uh, but anyway, so make sure you go over to that giveaways page and check that out. Um, I think uh, I think whoever ends up with that will be very pleased with their Roku Express. Though, I should note, actually, this is, it's a device that I haven't yet bothered to test. Um, you know, I, <laughs> I should, I, I shouldn't offer any excuses, but, um, but there are a lot of devices out there. There's constantly new devices, and this one just, it's been a little bit low on the totem pole for me. So if I'm being 100% honest, I haven't even tried it yet. So you might get to try it before I do. Hit the giveaways page and uh, and enter there. Entries are easy, so um, it's really no big deal. Anyway, all right, let's see where we're at. Um, I do have a few news items, like I said. Actually, you know what, let's do the first one, and then... Um, and then I'll, I'll do some q and I'll sprinkle Q&A throughout. We've got four news stories to go through. The first one has to do with Prime Day. So if you're unfamiliar, Amazon Prime, uh, you know, uh, biggest online shopping thing out there. They have Prime Day. Um, and this happens once or twice a year, depending on the <laughs> year, it seems like these days. Uh, but anyway, the Prime Day is coming up. I think it's just once a year these days. But the Prime Day is coming up in June. We don't have an exact date yet. But... Whenever Prime Day is kind of is coming up, they're ramping up for Prime Day. They always put a few uh, deals together, um, and I think they they do this probably to uh, get people just get people over to Amazon, get them prepped, get them excited for Prime Day or whatever. But anyway, one of the devices on, excuse me, the pre Prime Day deal this year is the Roku Ultra. This is the 2020 model. So this is their newest model of the Roku Ultra. Normally it goes for, oops, oh, come on, 99 bucks. Uh, but right now it's on sale for $69. That's 31% off. 
Um, and you can kind of see what the, yeah. So it was going for, okay, 95. They had it for a few bucks off before, but now it's even lower, 69 bucks. It's an awesome deal. If you've ever used a Roku Ultra, then you know. Um, if you haven't, then you should, you should give it a shot. Uh, if you So if this is something that you've been thinking about, uh, make sure you pop over to Amazon uh, and give it a shot. And if you wanna use our Amazon link, then again, go to the description. I've got a link to this very device in the description. So you can go uh, check that out there. Um, but the, the Roku Ultra is actually one of the very first devices that I ever um, that I ever reviewed for the channel. So this would have been in, I want to say 2017, maybe late 2016. I can't quite remember. Uh, but anyway, it was one of the first devices I ever did. And it blew my mind um, with, you know, how good it was. And that was a few years ago. Now with the newer model, it's even better. I really like the Roku Ultra. It When, when you start talking about... Um, flagship devices, you know, devices that cost, uh, you know, hundred bucks or more, then it does start to lose out when it comes to specs. Um, it, it starts to lose out to things like the NVIDIA Shield uh, for power users uh, or the Apple TV 4K is really good. Um, and, uh, you know, that one's a little bit less power user and a little more Apple user, but still it's a, an extremely good device. Uh, but the Roku Ultra, I'd say, goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with those devices for most users. But if you're a power user or if you're deeply embedded in the Apple ecosystem, then those other devices might be even just a little bit better. Uh, speaking of which, there is a new Apple TV 4K. And uh, you can check out... Hang on, now i gotta, now I got to get to... Um, uh, sorry, there's a new Apple TV 4K, and not only that, but there is a new uh, review of the Apple TV 4K by none other than Tashaka. Tashaka's creeping on my territory a little this bit. That's okay. Uh, he, if you're if you're unfamiliar with Tashaka's reviews, then I hope you give this uh, it, make this your opportunity to go check them out. Um, but let's, uh, yeah, let's actually pull that up here. Um, so Tashaka normally does phone reviews on our channel, uh, but he got his hands on the Apple TV 4K and is doing a review of that. So he is uh, doing a little bit of this streaming stuff. I would highly encourage you to go watch this video uh, when you have a moment. If you're interested in the new Apple TV 4K, Tashaka's reviews are extremely thorough, very fun, very interesting. I, I can't say enough good things about them. He got he got a little bit of the shaft because we ended up putting uh, we we gave him phones and phone services and, and all that stuff. And that is such a competitive uh, <laughs> spot on YouTube. Um, so he you know he's done um, heroic work doing you know mobile stuff for us on reviews. Uh, and I'm super excited for the streaming crowd that tunes into our videos to be able to see Tashaka's reviews because because uh, they are fantastic. So please go check that out. Um, all right. That being said, all right. So let's let's do a little bit of Q and Aing now. That's a word now, by the way. I just you know you should know Q and Aing totally a word. Um, and I'm gonna go and check in on what you guys are talking about. Um, let's see. Swish Pro Noob. HBO Max has a bunch of Miyazaki films. Yeah, it sound, looks like you guys are talking about HBO Max. Oh, hey, it's finally arriving in Latin America. That's fantastic. That's really great. Um, yeah, it's, it not only does it have a bunch of Miyazaki films, I'm pretty sure it has them all. Every Studio Ghibli film, if I'm not mistaken, uh, somebody could correct me on this, but I'm pretty sure that all of them, good heavens are on HBO Max. Um, in case you're wondering, I'm about to get uh, bombed by the, uh, the jets from the Air Force Base next door. So that's fun. Um, anyway, let's see. I'm confused. What should I watch? I have Netflix, Prime, Disney Plus. Oh boy. Well, you know, there's, there's really not... I've, I've been thinking about something. Manmit Singh, you can you can tell me, and the rest of you can tell me if you would like this. I've been thinking 
about the possibility of doing a spin-off channel. We talk a lot about streaming services and streaming devices here, but we don't do a lot of coverage of uh, streaming content. Uh, and part of that is just because we're not, you know, at reviews.org, it's not really a thing for us to be media critics or, you know, or content critics. Um, you know, we're, we're here to help you make purchasing decisions around devices and services and that sort of thing. Uh, but that doesn't, that doesn't get into like what shows are good because uh, that's so subjective, right? But would it be interesting to you guys yeah, if, if I had a channel that was, um, that was about streaming content? Because, hey, I watch a lot of it. Happy to provide my, uh, my delightfully correct reviews uh, of these, uh, this streaming content. Anyway, something I've been kicking around. But as far as what you should watch, uh, if you've got Netflix, Prime, Disney Plus, I mean, if you've watched all the big names, then, you know, then you're good. But go watch Queen's Gambit. Go watch uh, WandaVision was really good right up until the last episode or two. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's lots of stuff on there. Uh, yeah, I'm, and this is, this is a thing. The backlog, it gets crazy. Okay. All right, let's talk about this one. Zachariah, welcome back. I believe you were here last week. Good to have you back. Thoughts on the Discovery and Warner Media merger? I was surprised. It feels like at t just gave up when things were just starting and going well. Can you explain what the deal is here? Yes, uh, a little bit. And let's, okay, so first of all, let's pull this up. Um, here's what we're looking at. It's, uh, this is from the New York Times. In a deal with Discovery hatched in secret, at t sheds its media business. Okay, so the background is um, a few years ago, I want to say six years ago or so, uh, AT&T, which was all about mobile, right? They have, the I think at the time, it was the second largest um, mobile service provider in the country uh, behind Verizon, and they bought Warner Media. Warner Media is massive, right? They owned uh, HBO, obviously, they've got all these Warner titles, Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings and, you know, that, that uh, obviously all the old TV content from Warner Media and Friends, and et cetera. But anyway, point being, they bought this content. And the thought behind that at the time was, hey, we've got all these mobile customers and with streaming becoming more of a viable possibility, um, there's going to be a huge market for people streaming on their phones. Um, and we can buy up this massive media company with all its library and future production and package all this together um, with cell phone plans to, you know, to make the cell phone plans even stickier. And with that uh, stickier, meaning that it's harder for you to quit, right? That's why every time you go open a bank account, they want you to open a credit card and get your online banking going. And it is, it's all about making it sticky, hard to leave. Um, and so that was the thought. And since then, it's, it's not, <laughs> how do I put this? I don't want to be terribly unfair to AT&T because they made quite a few decent decisions. But the headlines, the stuff that was always most fun and most interesting to talk about was the stuff that AT&T would do uh, with their streaming services, especially. But, you know, even things like DirecTV that just made you like, like, why would you, what kind of decision is this? You know, just as a, for instance, here's just one. I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time ragging on AT&T because I do have a lot of respect for them in a lot of ways. Um, but just take, for instance, when they had DirecTV and then they got DirecTV now um, and then they had AT&T TV, AT&T TV now, DirecTV, AT&T, what, what, they had 18 million uh, streaming and TV services and they were all, um, <laughs> they were all named remarkably similar things and it was impossible to keep track of for like two years. Um, I have some videos where I, I had some fun in the past. I'm trying to like diagram it all out on a whiteboard. Um, yeah, it, it was crazy. So, so what are my thoughts on this? Uh, so Zachary says, I was surprised. It feels like at t just gave up when things were just starting to go well. Um, okay, so the Discovery and Warner media merger again. All right, so that was background. Now we're here. Um, Discovery... 
Discovery isn't just the Discovery Channel. If you were here on last week's video, we talked a little bit about uh, Discovery Plus uh, and what a fantastic streaming service that is. They own a bunch of different channels, True TV and HGTV and the Food Network and you know, on down the list. I, I think, it. I, what did we count last time, 20? I wanna say 20 networks that are on Discovery Plus. So they've got all this stuff, but they specialize in unscripted content. I hesitate to call it reality TV because when you're watching something like, um, <laughs> you know, House Hunters International, like it's a, that that's not quite reality uh, per se, but uh, but it's unscripted content, right? Um, so that's their specialty. And then Warner Media, obviously, they have a media empire. This is one of the biggest and most storied uh, media companies out there. Uh, but they definitely don't focus on the unscripted stuff. They, you know, scripted dramas and, you know, big tentpole blockbuster movies uh, and on down the line, HBO, etc. cetera. Um, and so with this merger, what's happening is AT&T is kind of, they're jettisoning Warner Media from their day-to-day books. They're not releasing ownership of it entirely. They're still keeping, if I have my numbers right, they're keeping 71% of uh, the share, uh, ownership share in Warner Media or whatever this new thing will be called. It'll still be 71% owned by AT&T. And then the balance, the 29% would be owned by Discovery. Uh, but this but the company that it would create would not be run by AT&T. It would be separate. So AT&T would be a shareholder. Um, and so the new company would in some ways still be answerable ultimately to AT&T um, in a, a, a big way. But as far as their day-to-day -day operations, it wouldn't be. So I was surprised, says Zachariah. It feels like AT&T just gave up when things were just starting and going well. Um <sighs> If you followed kind of the things that I've been talking about for the last few years, where AT&T tried and struggled mightily to get um, to get their their content creation, their their <laughs> media creation stuff, you know, going, get get all that experience under their belt, uh, it's been a real, real struggle. I think AT&T as a mobile provider had a really rude awakening at one point. Uh, or at many points along the line, if we're being honest, where they said, you know what, we know phones, but this is way out of our wheelhouse to like being a, a Hollywood production studio. That is not an easy thing to get into. Just ask Amazon, ask Netflix, like there are growing pains, there are difficulties. Um, and AT&T finally said, you know what, if we can, if we can just spin this off into another company, we're getting 71% of the, the profits off of this. Um, uh, but letting somebody else with more expertise, more experience, kind of take care of that management side, it makes sense. So this this news is potentially huge, right? Um, but I don't want to, I was tempted when this broke on Monday, broke on Monday morning, I was tempted to kind of jettison my plans for the week and just focus on this and do a video, a big explainer. But the thing is, we don't know enough yet, I think, to really make this, um, to, to make a huge deal out of it. It's important. You should know about it if you follow the industry. Uh, but for most of us, this isn't going to affect us for quite a while. And so I decided not to do a standalone video on it. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you have any specific questions about it, we can hunt down the answers, but there just aren't a lot of those answers to be had quite yet. Um, but I'll be keeping an eye on it for sure. Um, the deal I don't think would go through until next year, if I recall correctly, uh, maybe like midway through next year. So we've got months and months before um, things will start taking shape. You know, what's the new company going to be called? Is it is there going to be a brand new streaming service? Are they going to keep HBO Max? What, will the pricing tiers change? All these questions that I have, I'm sure you have, uh, that we just can't answer quite yet. So, um, all right. Oh, I feel like I just did a lot of talking on that. So my apologies if I uh, started rambling a little bit. Uh, but let's get to... Um, a few more of your questions, and then I'll get to the uh, the news item that we titled this video with. 
Um, okay, so Don, thanks for the great info. Always look forward to your videos. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, that's fantastic. My favorite upcoming 2022 movie. You're gonna have to give me something to to work with. I don't know. I I haven't looked at what's coming out in 2022. If I'm being honest, I have no idea um, what we're what we're looking at for 2022. Um, I can tell you the series I'm looking forward to the most would probably be the uh, Amazon Lord of the Rings series, the as yet untitled. It won't be called the Lord of the Rings, but it'll be some some kind of Middle Earth series. Um, very interested to see what they do with that. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell behind me, but okay. So those are a bunch of Sand Brandon Sanderson books, but these are this is the history of Middle Earth right here above me. Um, I am uh, I'm a huge nerd, uh, big fan of Lord of the Rings, to put it mildly. So I'm I'm interested to see what they do with that. Um, trepidatious, but but very interested. All right. So uh, let's see. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> answer me, answer me, answer me, answer me. Give me a shout at give me a shout. All right. Well, here's your shout out. <laughs> Uh, here's a good one. All right. SpongeBob asks Hulu or Amazon prime. I, uh, oh, this is, this is actually tough. I know, I know what my gut response was. My gut response was prime, but I'm not sure. Uh, okay. This is a good one because they're, this is a good one, partly because they're not comparable at all. Okay. Not, not, not at all, but, uh, they're very different. All right. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to do a versus video on the spot for you guys. Uh, <laughs> you know, I wish I wish I could like split screen myself. Uh, that'd be fun. Uh, okay, Amazon Prime. I've always put it like I've always taken it and put it in a separate corner from every other streaming service, um, if only because it's not just about the streaming service. When you sign up for Prime, you can sign up for just the streaming service, but not very many people are going to do that because when you sign up for Prime, you're signing up for the shipping and the uh, cloud storage and the music. Okay, I think we're good. Uh, you're signing up for so much stuff uh, beyond uh, just just the streaming service. The streaming service is very good, but it comes with all this other stuff that makes it even more attractive and even more difficult to let go of. So oftentimes when somebody asks this question, it's either which content is better or if I can only sign up for one, which one should it be? Like those are two separate questions. But when it comes to that one, you know, which one should I sign up for? It's like, I don't even count Prime as a, a streaming service that you sign up for. Good gracious. Sorry about the jets, everybody. I don't even count it as a streaming service because it's just like an add-on to everything else you get with Prime. Okay, now on the other side, you've got Hulu. Hulu also goes in a special little box. Um, it's a little bit more what I would think of as a, a traditional streaming service. I mean, it's been around, it, I think Netflix is the only one that's older than Hulu. So it's been around for a long time. But with Hulu, um, you've got Hulu, with with different tiers you've got the commercial supported tier commercial free tier then you've got the live uh tv hulu with live tv that you can get into that package um you can bundle it with disney plus and espn plus it's just it's so versatile um and there's so many choices that you have with hulu that it it does make it very very attractive so which one would i would i choose if this is a if I'm doing a versus video and I have to come down on one side or the other, which one would I rather see disappear tomorrow? Oh gosh, neither. But I'd probably rather stick with Amazon. I reserve the right to change my mind on this, but my initial reaction is I'd rather stick with Amazon over the long term just because they have so many massive projects in the pipeline that I'm really interested to see. So I already mentioned the Middle Earth series, the Wheel of Time is coming up. 
um, and you know, a hundred other reboots and this and that and the other that they're they're putting together. So Amazon is going to be very interesting over the next couple of years to see what they do. In fact, um, you know what I, I I've talked about the uh, or I in the title I mentioned the HBO Max uh, deal, but we're going to actually skip that for just a moment because this is just too good a transition. We got to talk about um, this one. Rumors suggest that Amazon is offering $9 billion for MGM. So this is a little bit similar, actually, to, um, to AT&T purchasing um, Warner Media. Okay, MGM, one of the oldest and most storied uh, production companies out there. Uh, you know, they own, what does it say down here? James Bond, Stargate, Rocky. I, I, okay, and they're just kind of like, throwing a few names out there <laughs> that people recognize. MGM owns so much. Um, it's a huge content library um, and, and, you know, and obviously a very attractive name for a company like Amazon to own. The reason that this is a little bit different than when, uh, than when AT&T bought WarnerMedia is that at the time, AT&T had... <sighs> approximately no experience <laughs> producing content, right? They just thought, you know, hey, we'll, we'll buy this thing up um, and then, uh, hey, well, it, it'll be a content production machine. We'll have all these hits and, you know, whatever. Didn't quite work out that way because AT&T didn't know how to manage the production side of things. Amazon is a little bit different because while it does not have the, uh, the depth of experience that, that, you know, somebody like MGM, or like Warner Media would have, they do have some, right? Over the last five years or so, uh, they Amazon has been producing content, so they're not complete strangers to the game, and that makes this a little bit different. Uh, you know, um, it smells the same, but tastes a little different, right? But it's a it's a similar kind of deal. So, th and again, this is just a rumor at this point, uh, but it is something to pay attention to. If Amazon buys MGM then Amazon Prime will get a whole bunch more stuff in their back catalog um, and uh, we'll, it'll be even more attractive than it is now. Um, and, you know, heaven knows, $9 billion. <laughs> it's more money than I could possibly imagine, uh, but it's, that, that, that's, it's not nothing, but it's uh, certainly doable for a company like Amazon, right? So, uh, so yeah, what are your guys' thoughts on this? Um, I'm going to skip ahead. Oh, you know what? Let's um, let's do uh, movie brands. Um, all right, we're gonna. I'm, I'm gonna look it up. Okay, so while you guys are talking for just a sec, I'm gonna go look up what do they have. What what do they have? Uh, let's say recently. Um, <laughs> What, okay, so the James Bond franchise. Oh, they own CNN. So that's, uh, if I, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm looking on a Wikipedia page and it's not really giving me a ton of uh, like an actual list. Um, here we go. Let's, let's try this. Um, MGM franchises. Okay, so... James Bond, Handmaid's Tale, that, that could, what? Rocky, Pink Panther, Vikings, Stargate, Robocop, Legally Blonde. Uh, let's see, these are their, these are their featured franchises. Um, <laughs> interesting. So MGM, MGM produced The Handmaid's Tale on Hulu. And if Amazon buys MGM, that could create some interesting conflicts there that might be interesting to follow um i don't know if you guys watched the vikings series that was fantastic uh yeah i, I don't know it might still be going i kind of hopped off after three or four seasons uh fargo mm, let's see yeah teen wolf okay well so they've got a few things uh it <laughs> they've got a few things don't worry yeah it, it could be interesting oh yeah somebody Mentioned Stargate. Um, okay, so let's get back on to uh, so, uh, a little bit more Q and A, and then I'll do our last news story for the day. Um, 
All right. <laughs> Craig, are you doing this in military base? Air Force base is about a mile that way. So they fly right over my studio every single day, uh, which I'll tell you what, it makes recording audiobooks a real pleasure, right? Um, all right. Uh, oh, okay. So this is a, you know, a little bit off the streaming thing, but how did you build your studio? Um, I, I moved into this house about four years ago. Um, and there was a, a wood shop in the backyard that hadn't been used for about 30 years. Um, <laughs> or at least that's what it looked like. You know, I started looking, you know, peeking behind the walls and everything. And it was just, uh, it was infested with spiders and ants and, you know, hornets. Oh my. Um, and so I ended up just tearing it down to the ground, but I still had this very nice uh, concrete pad to build on that was about 300 square feet. And so my dad and I uh, built it from the ground up. And I, I don't know how much I can how much I can show you. You can see like blankets up in the window to block out the light, um, all sorts of stuff. So yeah, that's that's what it looks like. Um, so yeah, I built it with. Uh, my own two hands roughly. Now we'll see if it can focus again on me. Um, so yeah, how did I build it? From scratch, there you go. Um, it's It's been one of my great pleasures. So this is out in the backyard. It's separate from the house, which makes it nice. I've got a couple of kids. Uh, so um, I've never, uh, you know, I've had to work from home just like many, many other people for the last year during the pandemic, uh, but I've never felt like I was able to complain much about it just because I still get to go to work, right? I can come in the studio, lock the door, focus for a few hours and do some work. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, okay. Let's see. I have not seen Army of the Dead on Netflix yet. I'm really uh, looking forward to giving it a shot. I like a lot of Zack Snyder's stuff. Um, you know, a lot of people disagree with that. That's fine. I like his aesthetic. I think it's good. So yeah, I'm interested in checking it out. Um, okay. Let's see. I have not. Oh, well, there's, I, I was going to say, I haven't heard this rumor. I, if, if you want to send me a link, um, you know, throw it in, uh, in the comments or, you know, tweet it at me or something. If, if there are credible rumors, I'd be interested to hear it. Um, I'd be kind of surprised if that happened, but uh, I'd be, okay, I'd be very surprised if that happened. Um, oh, here's, a, okay, we've got an alternate opinion from Debbie. I hate Amazon Prime, says Debbie. I wish I could opt out of it and have lower prime cost. Uh, okay, so what you're saying, if I understand right, is you sign up for Prime for the shipping and the, you know, whatever else on there, but you don't like the streaming service. You wish you could cut that out. That's interesting. So Prime on a yearly basis, unless they've changed the price recently, I think it's a hundred and, what was it, 119 bucks a year, if I'm remembering right. Um, so 10, call it 10 bucks a month for all of Prime. And what, like, okay, so if they cut streaming out of it, they might take that down to, seven bucks a month, something like that. I don't know. I, I, this, this is very interesting. All right. Everybody hit the, hit the chats and, and debate. Debbie says she hates Amazon prime. I, I don't, <laughs> I think it's great. One thing I will say with, to, to go with you, Debbie, I don't hate Amazon prime, but there is one thing that I wish they would change. Uh, and that is they, when they bought IMDb, Okay, so Amazon bought IMDb, including IMDb TV, which is a lot like Amazon Prime, but it's commercial supported and uh, free of charge, right? So you can go download Amazon Prime, or sorry, IMDb TV alongside Amazon Prime. But what they did after that happened is they took all this IMDb content and brought it into Amazon Prime, the, their browsing, right? And so it became very difficult for a while. Um, and it's a little bit better now, but it's still kind of a thing where you're browsing through Amazon Prime. And uh, for instance, uh, I think I've talked on this stream before about how much I love Fringe. This is a series that uh, premiered, I wanna say back in 2008, ran for five years. Uh, one of the best sci-fi programs ever put on TV. Um, absolutely fantastic. And then I was browsing through Prime and saw Fringe. Oh, great, awesome, I love Fringe. 
started it up. And what am I greeted with right away? A commercial. And it really like, it, how big a deal is that? Not that big a deal, except that I wasn't expecting it. And I pay for Prime, you know, and Prime content isn't supposed to have commercials. And so I, after a moment, I figured out, oh, okay, this is IMDb TV. Um, and so like, how big a deal is it really? Not that big a deal, but just from an experience point of view, like it was, it was frustrating for sure. So there are things that Prime could do better. How's that? <laughs> um, all right. Oh, Debbie also says, why Utah? It's beautiful, but try, but try to go out after 9 p.m. Uh, apparently, I don't know. You haven't spent much time in Utah lately. I, I don't know. It's, um, it depends on where you're at. If you're out in the suburbs, yeah, it's, it's not as uh, exciting as being in, you know, Brooklyn or something, but uh, Salt Lake City, it's, uh, it does, it does just fine for itself. Um, I don't watch Eurovision. I know I should. I know I would love it. Um, I just never, I have never gotten into it. So, um, okay. Oh, looks, okay. Uh, <laughs> let's do one more piece of um, news and then I'll finish up with a few more questions um, and we'll call it quits from there. So here we go. This is it. The HBO Max 999 ad supported tier is coming in June. Is it a good deal? That's what this person asked. Um, so basically, here's what's going on. Sometime next month, um, there will be a new HBO Max tier. Not only is it ad supported, but you do lose just a little bit of content. Um, the, you'll still have access to the entire HBO Max library, except for the thing that is making it so attractive the last few months, which is the same day releases for these big blockbuster movies that would normally be going to theaters, but they're same day debuting them in theaters and on HBO Max. So we're talking about Wonder Woman 1984. We're talking about Godzilla vs. Kong. Um, well, the Snyder Cut doesn't count, but uh, Mortal Kombat was the one that just came out. That's right, Mortal Kombat, which is the best performing one of the bunch so far. Who would have thought? Um, anyway, this will not be available on the 9.99 tier. For I kind of get why, um, but it does, I, I don't know, I'm uh, smarter people than me have crunched the numbers and they understand, you know, I, like I'm not trying to second guess it, but in, in my mind, <laughs> it's like, okay, this is your most popular thing right now is these same day releases on HBO Max. And, you know, millions upon millions of people are watching them. If they signed up for the ad supported tier, that's, you know, millions of hits on these ads that they can sell. I don't know. Call me crazy or ignorant. Either is fine. But uh, it seems like they could have made just as much money by putting those movies on the ad supported tier. Anyway, uh, let's see. Is there anything else that we need to, to note from this? Uh, so $9.99 a month. That's um, so ten, call it 10 bucks a month. That's still $3 more than you'd be paying for Disney+. Plus. Um, it's a little less than you'd be paying for Netflix, but you got to watch the ads, right? So, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much a, I, I want to be giving you guys like a ton of amazing, uh, <laughs> you know, news and analysis on this. Um, but I just don't, it, there's not any more detail beyond that. That's what it is. There's an ad supported tier. It's not going to have the same day release movies. Um, so if you have been waiting around for a little bit cheaper price to try HBO Max and just dip into that library, uh, then this might be attractive to you. Uh, if you're signed up for it now, you don't mind commercials and you'd rather save a few bucks, you know, that's 60 bucks over the course of the year that you'd be saving, um, then there you go. This is a good chance for you to, to have another option. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'm curious what you guys think. Is this a, a good thing? Is this, um, uh, is this something you'll be trying out? Would this entice you to HBO Max? Yeah, let me, let me know what you think of all this. Um, I just want to watch Killing Eve. I'm sure you're not alone in that. 
<laughs> that Mortal Kombat movie, I liked it. I, I didn't love it. It wasn't a good movie, but it was fun. I will say the uh, here's my here's my little dip into um into uh commentary uh, you know content commentary the mortal kombat movie would have been five times better if they had chosen one path it was it was really dark and violent and intense uh, but then they also did a lot of the campy stuff where they shoehorned in all the phrases, get over here, fatality, or flawless victory, all this stuff. And it's like, choose one. You know, the, the 1995 Mortal Kombat movie went way hard into the camp and it was brilliant. I mean, it's not, again, not a good movie, but it's really entertaining. Um, if they had decided to go the other way and just keep it dark and gritty, then don't do the catchphrases. Like keep the campy stuff out. Either way, would have been better. Uh, okay, let's see. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, this is a great question. Will users who get HBO Max through AT&T be bumped down to this subscription? Who? Ah, uh, I haven't heard anything about that. I assume that will be coming out, you know, uh, very soon. My guess, if I were to guess, and you know, so I wish I had a tie on so I could kind of throw it over my shoulder. Like I'm, this is not in my official capacity because I don't know, but my prediction would be that they would, um, that they would not do that for the highest tier unlimited subscribers on AT&T, at least not for say a year, right? They, so they, would have that on there and then they say okay we're going to discontinue this service but we're going to give you six months you know whatever um before we or like discontinue downgrade whatever uh but it would be that would be that would be a tough blow for them yeah to just say hey yeah you're gonna have commercials now i don't know they could do it but i my prediction would be not um this is on your website actually this one is on tom's guide um, so yeah, we don't, um, over at reviews.org, we, we don't do a ton of, uh, the news stuff. Like we're not constantly breaking news the way some of these other sites are. Um, it's just not in our wheelhouse. Uh, so I love, you know, Tom's guide, cord, cordcuttersnews.com and, you know, these places that are constantly breaking news, uh, in this industry, uh, CNET, obviously those kind of places. Uh, but over on reviews.org, uh, we tend to, um, concentrate on, um, being more in depth than quick, if that makes sense. Uh, here on the YouTube channel, things are a little bit different, you know, and I, I'm, I'm happy to dip into the new stuff here on the YouTube channel. Uh, but over on the website, you're not going to find a ton of breaking news. It's more like, uh, we want to help you make purchasing decisions. Um, and at some point doing more news content like this, maybe it'll make more sense. Uh, but as of right now, we want to help you make good purchase decisions and so we'll take stuff that is on the market and make sure we do really thorough, in-depth reviews of those. Um, so yeah, I, I tend to go to um, uh, to these other places, Tom's Guide, CNET, let's see, what was the other one from, uh, oh, obviously New York Times, um, Tech Hive, you know, whatever, so. Um, okay, oh, I'm putting Debbie to sleep. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> That's all right, we're, we're about ready to wrap up here. Um, let's see. Am I going to watch Fast 9? Of course I'm going to watch Fast 9. Who wouldn't watch Fast 9? I just did a rewatch of the entire series, like one through eight. I watched them all over the course of about a month. Um, I, I find them wildly entertaining. So Corona hair. Oh, whoa, whoa. Corona hair. That's true. It's kind of true. <laughs> so last year when the Rona hit, I, I was uh, scheduled for uh, uh, surgery. I had surgery on my nose and throat. Um, and so that was in March, I want to say. Yeah, I think it was like late March, early April. I was scheduled for this surgery. The Rona hit. Everybody lost their minds, myself included. It was crazy. I called up the hospital. I was like, am I, like, am I supposed to still do this? It was an elective surgery. So I'm like, I don't know. They said, yeah, come on in. So I did the surgery and it was like a two week recovery. Um, where I didn't shave, I didn't cut my hair, whatever. And I got done with it and I'm just like, whatever, 
I'll just keep the whatever sparse facial hair I have, you know. Uh, I'll just keep it. And then as things stretched on, <laughs> like, don't go see your barber. You're going to murder everybody you love if you get your hair cut, you know. And so I'm like, I guess I won't see my barber. And eventually it just kept getting longer and longer. And uh, I didn't hate it. So, but yeah, today it's a little, it's a little unkempt today. But, uh, but, uh, but how dare you? Corona hair. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, <laughs> okay, on the 852 video. So this would have been uh, Tashaka's video. There's an anti-5G person commenting that 5G artifacts cause damage to our health. What is your response? What is my response? What is my response? I'll give you my response. Um, if I can find it fast enough. Um... <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I know it's in here somewhere. Uh, oh, okay, here. Here you go. Um, let's pull up this page. My response is you should go check out Whistle Out. Um, Whistle Out is uh, a channel that I've appeared on. I've I've brought Sherry onto our channel. She's fantastic. Whistle Out is fantastic. Please go check them out if you like cell phones and you know cell phone issues and you know connectivity. I think they do internet stuff as well now. But anyway, she did a breaking down 5G conspiracy theories video um, that I, I quite enjoyed. So there's a lot of those out there. I don't buy into them. Um, so yeah, go go check out Whistle Out, uh, where Sherry breaks down 5G conspiracy theories. Whatever she says, yeah, there you go. Whatever she says on that video, that's my response. So how about that? <laughs> um, okay. All right. So let's go ahead and, and call it there. I'm just double checking. Um, I'm going to just remind everybody one more time to go check out the, uh, the giveaways page in the description. If you're on YouTube, it's down below. Go check out the description. Uh, enter the giveaway, super easy to do. This week we're giving away a Roku Express 4K Plus. Um, so if you're interested in that, whether you're trying to get into Roku or just expand your streaming arsenal a little bit, either way, um, add that one to your list. If you can, we'll draw a winner next week. Last week we did a giveaway for the, um, uh, what's it called? The Amazon Smart Plug. And the winner for that was um, Amy Boyd. So Amy, I don't know if you're if you're watching, if you are still watching, but uh, Amy Boyd, we'll be emailing her uh, very soon if we haven't already. So yeah, make sure you go enter that. Go check out reviews.org. Uh, subscribe, tell your friends, leave a review. There are no reviews, but thumbs up, hit the comments afterwards, et cetera, et cetera. Thanks everybody for coming to the Friday live stream. Um, I, I, uh, enjoy having you all here. Um, George is, he says you're stuck in England. If, if I win, can you ship it to England? We can't, it's U S only. Um, so if you are a U.S. resident, you can still enter, but you'd have to give us a shipping address within the U S. Um, it's just, it's prohibitively expensive for us to ship anything overseas. Unfortunately, um, I wish we could, honestly, I, I wish we could open up our giveaways to, you know, uh, we've got some viewers in India. We've got some, you know, viewers in the UK, viewers in Latin America. I'd, I'd love to open it up, but unfortunately we can't. Um, okay. So thanks again, everybody. I'm sorry I couldn't get to every question, uh, but I'll be here next week. So tune in at the same time and uh, I will see you then. All right. Have